Baby, that is one amazing moth. Imagine if there was a YouTuber who showed you how to breed it in just five steps. That would be very convenient. Interested in breeding moths? Then I have good news because I'm going to teach you how to breed this species in five steps. First, we start with the first step. Step number one. Let's get started. Step number one. The eggs. First, the eggs. This part is very easy as it is typically with most species of silk moth. Incubate the eggs on room temperature. Around 21 degrees Celsius is fine for them. You honestly don't have to do anything except for waiting. Keep them warm and avoid extremes. In about two weeks time, a swarm of tiny black caterpillars will appear from the eggs. And that will bring us immediately to the next step. How was it doing so far? Did it go well? If so, we can proceed to step number two. Step number two. Step two, baby caterpillars. Wow, here are the babies. Before we proceed, here is what you can do. Fill a tiny flask with water and add cuttings of host plant to the bottle. This will keep the leaves fresh. For this species you can use many plants, like oak tree, willow, acacia, robinia, cherry, beech, apple, and some sources even say pine tree. That's a lot of options. Next, place it in a small container with some paper towels. Then you can add the caterpillars. This species is not difficult to rear. The most difficult part is obtaining them. They're actually a little bit rare in the pet trade, despite being common in the wild. If you're lucky, you can get some, your hands on some breeding material. Give them time and space. Over time, the caterpillars will feed in groups and slowly grow bigger and bigger. The first life stages of these caterpillars are social and they are awesome. Keep the container clean and the leaves fresh. Oh, look at them now. At this point in time, we do need to upgrade their enclosure to something bigger. I will show you. Ready for the third part? Step number three. Yeah? Step number three. Step three, big caterpillars. These caterpillars have grown significantly bigger. It's important to keep caterpillars in containers that correspond to their size. Grab yourself a very big plastic container. Next, fill a water bottle or a soda can with water. Add cuttings of food plant to the water. Then place the food plant in your new huge container and add paper towels. Over time, caterpillars will grow much bigger and bigger. When they reach maximum size, they are quite impressive. This species appears to be really strong in captivity. They tolerate really dry and really humid conditions. They do prefer warmer over colder. Think Mediterranean. Larvae are white, have a thick leathery skin and spines. They seem tough and adapted to many weather conditions. They are also quite generalist when it comes to the type of plants they can consume. After about one and a half months, they will want to pupate. This species makes a very minimalistic cocoon. They just string soil particles together with silk. Let me show you. You can place the larvae that are about to pupate in a plastic container lined with paper towels. Over time they will burst out of their skin and form rather robust pupa. So what do we do with the pupa next? Good question, let me show you. We're coming close, we're coming close. Step number four. Step four, pupa. The pupa of this species have a very thick shell. Most of the time this species has just one brood per year, but actually they can have a second brood in some rare cases, especially if there are early rains. The pupa of this species can be stored on room temperature indoors. However, in winter they can also be hibernated. You see this species is mostly found near the South African Cape province, with some more populations in Namibia and Lesotho, but most importantly South Africa. In this region, they experience a Mediterranean climate. Yes, this includes a season with colder weather. The species naturally experiences cooler temperatures. Please keep in mind they want it cold, but not freezing. 
winter arrived in my country. But I did not expose them to outdoor temperature, that would be way too cold. Instead, I hibernated them in my basement at a temperature of about 14 degrees Celsius. They do have to be frost free. This is definitely chilly, but not cold. Then I honestly waited until spring. Ah, spring is here. It's time to take the pupa back to room temperature. This is me warming the pupa up on room temperature in spring and before you know it, the moths come out. That's the next step. Yep, we are at five out of five. Step number five. Are you ready for it? Oh, I sure hope so. Step number five. Five adult moths. Wow, the moths have come out. So this is a zigzag emperor moth. What an incredibly beautiful creature, don't you guys think? Amazing if you ask me. You can see why they are called zigzag emperors. They have iconic zigzag stripes. Just lovely. Males tend to be a bit smaller than females, as is normal with most species of moths. Now taking care of these moths is stupidly easy. They only live for about a week. And if you want to mate them, they just have to be together in the same enclosure in a space that has free airflow and a little bit of warmth. Personally, I do it outdoors in summer in my home country and it works. Unfortunately, it's very hard to observe the mating since they only mate for a few minutes in the total darkness at night. The main sign of fertilization is if the female dumps all her eggs at once in a huge cluster. If they're fertile, expect to see baby caterpillars in like two weeks time. Life cycle completed. Thank you for watching the best and highest quality moth channel on YouTube. This was your host Bert Coppens. If you enjoy this type of content then please do check my other videos. I filmed a lot of moth species in my life. More than anybody else on YouTube. See you in the next one.